Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, the health effects of kombucha. I'm kindly joined by Adam from Jar Kombucha. If you haven't seen our other videos, go check them out. One of them all about how to make the perfect kombucha yourself and a tour of the very impressive Jar Kombucha Brewery here in East London. Thanks for joining us again, Adam. Thanks, so we get the question a lot about the health benefits of tea and the health benefits of kombucha. Our approach, I think similar to yours, is focus on quality, focus on taste, get the best quality kombucha, the best quality tea, the best tasting uh, tea and kombucha, and the health benefits, which are numerous, will come as a secondary side effect. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of people are not happy with that, so <laughs> I would like for you to um, discuss with us the truths, half-truths, the myths around kombucha and health. Cool. So, uh, it is important to point out, at least initially, that there haven't been any studies done on the effectiveness of kombucha as a whole on the human body, but what has been studied um, are the effects of certain compounds found within kombucha on the body. Yeah. Um, now, of course, kombucha is made with tea, so mm -hmm. you obviously get all the benefits of the antioxidants that you brew your kombucha with. Okay, let's just deal with that now, because they're, they're, tea has had thousands of clinical studies. There is something that I can say to you without any shred of doubt. Drinking tea is very, very good for you. It's been shown in metadata studies to help with cardiovascular issues, to help with uh, anti-inflammatory, it's also antimicrobial, it's got antioxidants, as you say, although the mechanisms between the an behind the antioxidant effect on the body is still up for debate. It's also anti-angiogenic. There are so many different health benefits of tea and I will inevitably have to do a video all about that at some point. I don't know how much of that transfers yep. into kombucha mm -hmm. through the fermentation process, but let's take it as read that tea in general is very, very good for you. Okay. And then in addition to that is the acetic acid is actually a compound found in kombucha, mm. which has been studied on its own to have a positive impact on your health. Now acetic acid has been shown in various studies to basically be able to kill bad bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella, also bad yeast such as candida, while promoting the growth of good bacteria in your gut or your microbiome as it's called. Um, also acetic acid has the ability to slow the release of insulin into your bloodstream after a high carbohydrate meal. So acetic acid is an incredible compound for the body um, and in our kombucha, if you've tasted it before, it's quite sour. So we have mm. quite a bit of it in there. Yeah, and I think that um, acetic acid is, you know, people are drinking apple cider vinegar in the morning. It's, exactly. it's, it's developed a bit of a, a sort of reputation, but there are very established studies that demonstrate health properties of taking in acetic acid. Um, it's interesting because therefore it's more of a prebiotic, right? Because yeah, exactly. it's setting up the right environment mm -hmm. to allow your microbiome to flourish in a healthy way. Exactly. Right, but let's talk about the uh, live versus not live yeah. kombucha, but also in vinegar. So yeah. you always talk about, oh, you need to get the apple cider vinegar with the mother yeah. in it. Yeah. What can you tell us about that? Is that true or is that a myth? It's a myth. Uh, there's no scientific evidence to support the theory that the bacteria in kombucha or in apple cider vinegar has any noticeable impact on your gut health. The main reason being that most of the bacteria that comes through your body is killed by your stomach acid mm. before it reaches your gut. And even if it did make its way to your gut, Everybody's body is different. Yeah. Some people will uh, be able to propagate different strains of bacteria from scratch in their microbiome. Some people might not. Um, and also the bacteria that's found in kombucha and in apple cider vinegar are not strains that already exist in your microbiome. So they're not gonna propagate themselves from scratch anyways. Um, so the, the probiotic kind of uh, claims about kombucha are, are in fact a myth and there's no science to back that. So you know, fundamentally important is the microbiome and the microbiota is very, very important for your health. And that's something that you can go and research. It's good for your immune system. You know, it's it's the it's the sort of core uh, root of your immune system is your microbiome. So you want to protect it and you want a varied, a healthy culture of bacteria in there. Yeah. But the idea that the uh, bacteria that form part of kombucha um, is going to make it down there 
And secondly, whether or not it actually has a place in your microbiome is something that's under question and certainly there isn't enough evidence out there about that. Exactly. Right? I think in essence, uh, a, a good way of distilling it down is the effects of kombucha, uh, the positive impact of kombucha on your body comes from the acids produced by the bacteria rather than the bacteria themselves. Yeah, so therefore again, more prebiotic rather than probiotic. So you hear a lot about, you know, the sort of the mother and in, in kombucha you talk about, you know, making sure that it's alive, etc. That's something that you would say is not really something that you need to be looking for um, and you should just be focusing on taste. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you're drinking kombucha for health reasons, uh, you basically would want to brew your kombucha as long as possible so that you would have as much acetic acid as possible. Right. So if you are doing it for those reasons, apple cider vinegar, kombucha that's been fermented for a long time is good for you because of that acetic acid content. And I've noticed that from my own experience and talking to people drinking kombucha, there is a sort of upper limit that mm -hmm. some people reach, you know. Sure. Some people can drink a lot of kombucha yeah. and are fine. Other people, they find that if they drink too much of it, they mm -hmm. start to feel a little bit different. Maybe their, their, their digestive system feels a bit different. What are your recommendations in terms of, you know, dose mm. of, of kombucha? I guess when starting uh, to drink kombucha for the first time, start small. Um, start with 100 mils, see how it makes your tummy feel, uh, and then work your way up. Uh, based on anecdotal evidence, uh, there's no benefits beyond about 480 to 500 mils of kombucha a day. So that's a couple of these bottles. Yeah, so right? two of these bottles. Yeah. And generally speaking, I'll have about 240, 250 mils of kombucha after my lunch to aid in my digestion and basically give me a little perk up from the little amount of caffeine that's still left from the green tea. Okay, um, so the uh, best time to drink is after food or? It depends. Uh, some people like drinking it first thing in the morning to kickstart di their digestion. Yeah. Or some people like having it after a meal to help settle their stomach and help aid in the digestion after they've So as food. with absolutely everything, it's all individual. You need to like experiment, play around, try drinking at different times. And most important, just sort of have that sort of observation. Just be observant, you know, so that you kind of get to know your body and how it reacts. Sometimes as you say some people start with a small amount and then mm -hmm. their body gets used to it and they can drink more it's like matcha in tea you know yeah. some people the first time they drink matcha it's a very strong reaction to matcha and then they get used to it and drink it uh, every day but I guess the takeaway points here is that kombucha has some health benefits mm -hmm. with acetic acid there aren't enough studies to really go much further than that. That's not to say that there aren't other health benefits, but you've got to be very cautious always talking about them without enough studies, enough sort of metadata, enough, enough big population mm -hmm. data. But the idea of the probiotic effect of kombucha is a little bit on shaky ground, exactly. right? Yeah. And, um, but you know, what about sugar content? What about that? So kombucha is a low sugar drink. Generally speaking, uh, kombucha sits around three to maybe 4% sugar. So if you think about that next to a Coca-Cola, that's 10.6% sugar. So kombucha is a really good way to wean yourself off a soda addiction. And certainly we've seen that with a lot of our customers. A lot of friends of mine have started drinking kombucha mm. in place of other artificially produced drinks. Yeah, 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 no, great. A great alternative and certainly a welcome addition to any bar as well. So Absolutely. low alcohol, no alcohol, low sugar drink you know that tastes delicious as well so there you go if you've got any questions about the health effects of kombucha then throw them in the comments section below and I will see if I can get them over to Adam to answer and we are doing a may leaf and jar collaboration some spectacular kombucha is coming your way if you happen to come to our tea house in London we're gonna be having some exclusive jar XML kombucha on tap for you that's it, Tea Heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, this is Adam from Jar. I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.